Hello everybody, welcome to this playthrough for Master Division with the tournament win for the qualifying round here for the Babas 9 Hole Cup here in Golf Clash the game. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Play Demic. And before we start, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that this qualifying round is extremely tough. The wins are not in our favor and we're going to have to fight for absolutely everything. The best chances is hole number 5 and hole number 7 in my opinion. Sure, we do have some really good shots otherwise, but when it comes to the Southern Pines, it often takes a little time to get those to be absolutely spot on. But I do hope that the adjustments and the videos here will provide you a solid ground to not make any mistakes and maybe get a couple of extra drops because that's all that is going to be needed to have a super duper tiebreaker when it comes to the Southern Pines and this 9-hole cup. Ultimate tournament guides for the Spring Major that comes up in just a couple of days. Make sure that you do subscribe to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy and make sure that you get yourself an advantage over your opponent. Let's go to hole number one. We are going to start off with hole number nine. And this is going to be a difficult hole because we're playing in headwind. And what I will do is that I will provide you with an aggressive drive, which I would say is a possibility to play with Apocalypse level six plus if you play with a lower level driver than apocalypse level six i would recommend to basically just lay up on the as far down the left side possible and then just take the birdie by transport the ball to pin adjust max plus 10 and once that is done we shall in that case use uh, max curl to the right and go with approximately one ring of overpower i'm playing with the luminary ball and which is, uh, I, we can almost call it a free-to-play ball, because that is a ball you can win by just getting to the final round in Master. We're looking to get to around 380 yards, but, you know, even if we get here, this is not going to be a simple um, eagle in any means, but we do get ourselves in a position where we can play the rough bump. And here I'm using seven bars of topspin, and it is very important that you do play with a cataclysm to make sure that you do have the power enough. You can see that having the ball guideline go through the hole, but that is, you know, in my opinion, that is a little bit too little. You can see that I move up even more, but I would say that we need to move up even more than that just to make sure that we don't go short because the headwind is going to compress the ball guideline. Us falling down into the bunker is going to make us lose some power as well. 5% elevation and from plus 4 I played up on 65% slider. You can see that I add overpower in the end just to try to compensate for falling down into the bunker. And sure, we do hit perfect and the ball hits the rough and it rolls towards the pin. But you can see here now that as we do not have the speed enough, the ball falls left because the green slightly slopes left. If we would be having more speed, I don't th think the ball would have missed that uh, in that case. So hole number one, it all depends on the gear that you're playing with, if you're going to push for it or not. But I would say like this, there will be just a handful of eagles on hole number one on this hole. There will be way more pars, so make sure that you at least do not play a way that you feel uncomfortable with and would miss the birdie, because a par would not be good moving forward. Hole number two, no movement shot. We're going to make it simple for ourselves here. And we're going to go 3.5 bars of backspin, one bar side spin to the right. I would like to say, though, that you should be playing closer to a 3.7 bars of backspin than playing uh, towards a 3.3. .3. So a pretty heavy 3.5 backspin, in my opinion. One bar of side spin to the right. We adjust 1 to 1, which is medium distance plus 15%. Power 2 ball settings. And once we are done that, we're just going to take our shot. Now, unfortunately, you will notice that we will miss just left of pin. What would we do in this scenario here? I would actually do two things. I would try to go a little bit more backspin on my shot. Trying to go like a 3.7 bars of backspin. I would also add 1.2 bars of side spin to the right. And so those are the two things that I would do. I would not try to change the position. I would try to keep myself with a no movement. And you can see that we just burned the edge there. So it's not that we are far away, but this hole is 
tricky in terms of that we do need to hit that slope in the absolute best way. I've tried a couple of rough bumps out, but not really any that gets me into a, a way that I like, because again, there is some glitchy spots there as well. So I'm going to go in the qualifying round, a no movement, try to work with it, add a little bit more backspin, add a little bit more side spin to the right, and keep the one-to-one -one and the no movement with the quarterback. Hole number three, no movement. We're gonna make it very easy for ourselves. I'm using a ghost ball because here I don't really care about what needle speed I'm gonna have. I'm just going to be glad to actually waste a ghost ball to just go and lock in the, the eagle. The more wind we're having, the better it's going to be because we do want to reach as far down the fairway possible. Adjust maximum distance plus 10 and we apply max top spin, one left spin and go full blast overpower trying to hit perfect. But even if you hit great left or great right, you shall not be alarmed. It will be no problem to still stay on the fairway. Those of you having Apocalypse 5 or Apocalypse 6 and have the possibility to play with a ball with top spin boost, it could be better to do so, especially if you do have at least power 3 on that. And the reason for that is that you will obviously want to get as far down the fairway possible, because that will all help out for the second shot where we're just going to play for the green. I'm going to play it as careful as I possibly can and just land myself somewhere on the green or on the fringe or fairway on the back of the green. I don't want to flirt with the bunker by any means and just once again just gonna be taking it very very careful. 10% elevation maximum distance is what I play. I could have played it less but once again I want to play it very carefully and to make sure that I'm not gonna mess up the eagle because once again as you're gonna hear on hole number nine later on in this video is that there will be more players uh, make like there will be way more players making birdies than albatrosses i don't think anyone will make an albatross on this one maybe if you do please send me that video because i would love to shout uh, shout you out uh, for that because making an albatross on this one is you know something that i personally have never done so take the eagle and run the hole number four after playing hole three Hole number four, I'm going to play with a wind five power three ball here. If you do not want to spend a wind five power three ball, you don't have to do that. You can play with a wind four power three ball instead, like the Centurion or a Kingslayer or any other wind four power three ball here that does have one bar of side spin. White ring to the left by the rough line with APOC 7 and APOC 8. And if you play with APOC 5 or 6, you go half of the white ring into the rough on the left in max distance. Five rings of overpower with a POC 7 and a POC 8, a POC 5 and a POC 6, you always go max overpower with those clubs. Maximum distance plus 10 is the adjustment and elevation, and we're looking to get down on the fairway without getting the glitch roll to 380 to 390 yards. If you do get the glitch roll, which unfortunately is going to be in play, which is not something that we can take away as a factor, and that's going to happen sometimes, then you will be around 400 yards. You will still have a rough bump opportunity, but it's going to be tougher as we play without any reference. Now, okay, top of the yellow ring by the edge of the pin there, and that's going to be plus 10. We have one left spin, always. And now we're looking to use the green ring slash the inner ring to be by the edge of the rough. And we're going to have to have want to have the ball guideline to go through the hole is very important as we do have a slight headwind for this approach. Now 7.9 miles per hour we're looking to play with an 11.59 for the second shot as we fall down into the bunker. I do adjust in this case 8.7 rings and once it's time to take the shot I'm just barely going to cover the bottom teeth with my ball to add a little bit of overpower to compensate again for falling down into the bunker. We hit the rough nicely, but unfortunately we missed approximately two decimals to the right of the pin, maybe three decimals to be um, to be clear there. So looking at that for our us playing 8.7 rings, I would like to give ourselves in that case playing 87% slider, 15% elevation for the next go with a Top of the yellow pin check at plus 10. Top one on hole number four as we once again are getting headwind on a par four or a par five here of the Southern Pines.
one of my favorite shots, I must say. I really do enjoy this shot that we're gonna do now. We're gonna go one bar of left spin and one and a half bar of back spin. Be quick with it, and because now we're gonna set up the shot. Uh, shot plus thirteen is where we want to be with the quarterback. You can see that I do have approximately what is it like one fifth or something by the full yellow ring outside the rough with the ball guy line pointing to the right side of the cup. And adjustment is gonna be max plus ten power three. You may be wondering, do I have to play with a win 5 power 3 ball? No, we have had drops in the team by using win 4 power 3 ball as well. But obviously, lower wind will be easier to control. So it's up to you what you want to do. No pull angle for this shot. Just a straight pull and just try to hit perfect. A great left and a great right will still clip the rough. So you don't have to be um, worried about that. And you can see here now the ball bounces into the rough. Remember now we offset the right of cup. Rolls up the hill. Falls down towards the pin and we drop it right side of the cup. So what should we do? We should not do any offset. We should actually just aim for pin. So next time when you play, then you aim for pin directly and keep everything else the same. And then I do believe we're going to have a very good success on the hole that I do feel based on the wins that we're having is going to be the absolute best chance to get something extra combined with hole number seven. Hole number six, we're gonna play a very easy drive. Here I'm using three bars of side spin to the right and seven bars of top spin with Apocalypse level eight here. And I'm looking to stretch out the ball uh, target to find the ball guideline to be just left of the pink bush. Then we release, we play max overpower, max curl to the right and do a power slice. Here again, we're playing with a power four wind, uh, uh, sorry, power wind four ball and it comes in just lovely the plan is to position on our cell to play in between the trees here that you can see when you do play with uh, what can i say when you do play with the apocalypse level five and level six i would recommend to move approximately half a ring to a ring more right as you play with less curl on those two clubs than what you do play with apocalypse level eight Second shot, we are going to use uh, the uh, fringe check by the end of the green. So the start of the fringe by the back of the green. That was plus six just before plus seven. And now I'm using three bars of side spin to the right and 2.8 bars of back spin. Ball guideline go through the hole, approximately two green squares. And then we will adjust with a 35% elevation and plus six, like at the top of plus six, shall in that case equal 82% slider. I do play 80% slider in this video and you're going to see how close we are <laughs> with 80%. But that also just tells me that we do need to have 2% extra slider here to get this ball to drop. This one, like once again, as we do have headwind, is going to be an extremely difficult one to consistently drop. But with this shot that I do provide for you, it's going to definitely give you a chance. But look, how close can we be without dropping it? But again, 82% slider from just before plus 7 uh, back fringe check with the sniper. A lot of technical stuff there, but again, we need to work with those if we're going to have a chance on the tough southern pines. When it comes to hole number seven, now we're going to blast it on the right hand side using our apocalypse level six or better. And when I say six and better, it's because we do want to have seven bars of topspin. I can almost say that a six will be will, will be dangerous in low wind. So apocalypse level seven, level eight players will be in for a treat here. We do stretch up to max using the white ring to the right to be just by the bunker. Then we release, we are just max plus 10, max top spin, one bar side spin to the left. And if we do have wind that it's going to be lower than 17 miles per hour, we shall go full blast of overpower. If you do have a higher wind, you need to take off a little bit of overpower to make sure that you don't go over uh, the platform there and directly into the water. Now, a couple of things can happen. 
One, that you do do what I do here, getting very close for an hole in one. Two, that you get stuck into the rough. Or three, that you get onto the fairway by clipping the rough. If you do not get to green, use the funnel. There's a massive funnel on the top of the green there. So make sure you look for that because honestly, that is like a almost a 10 ring funnel which means that you will be able to drop that shot with a great left or a great right so my recommendation is to play right if you do not have the clubs for it you can try to get close on the left hand side or maybe lay up and play with a short turn towards the pin instead but those of you with good clubs will have a massive advantage over those that do not on hole number seven So for hole number 8, I've been tinkering with some IDs here, but to be completely honest, the direct crosswind that we're having here now is not that fun to play with, because it somewhat gets ourselves could get ourselves in tricky spots. So I'm actually trying to use backspin and just land it here on green. What I do notice though, is that we will be having a big problem as we do not have the backspin enough to actually get the ball to stop and roll down towards the pin if doing this shot so if you're going to play this shot you play this one for a birdie with a very slim chance making a hole in one i would say you need to be a bit lucky the way that i would tweak this shot though is not anything with a setup or the pull angle which is a 12 1 or the max plus 10 that is to remove the overpower that we're using here in the end but i again want to just be careful because i do not feel that this is going to be a shot that is going to drop that much but if we're going to have a chance, we need to get that ball to fall down sooner. And therefore, we need to remove that overpower and let the first bounce be further back on that fringe. But at the same time, you know, be careful because you don't want to drop directly into the bunker. There is other ways of playing this hole where you can curl it in from the left. I hate curl on a par 3, uh, which is, you know, out of the question for my end. It's just going to be uh, too risky than I'd rather take. Like, it's too risky in terms of that we have to bounce over the bunker. Then I'd rather go on green. We can play on the right side, which unfortunately have a very glitchy spot when attacking the pin, which not gives us a consistency there either. And with a bad great right, we're going to get stuck into the rough. So this hole doesn't offer that much. So I'm not that disappointed about going for a backspin shot on green uh, because the wind isn't really in our favor there. So I'm going to take the birdie, be okay with that, and hopefully we're going to have a better wind in the final round. Super boring wind on hole number 9 and I'm going to play with Apocalypse and the Cataclysm in my bag and I'm going to play with the Luminary Ball once again because I don't really think there is much, you know, I don't think it's worth spending a, a, better, a better special ball here in my opinion. I'm starting at just the plus 3 yard mark, like just before plus 4, white ring to the left by the rough line and that is with a Poc 7 and a Poc 8. Max top spin, two bars of side spin to the left, and we're going to adjust, make no overpower, no curl whatsoever, and just trans transport the ball down the fairway. If you play with Apocalypse 5 or Apocalypse level 6, then you play with half of the white ring into the rough on the left. I would then recommend to push up to max as you do not have the same power, sorry, the same top spin as what you have on Apocalypse level 7 and level 8. Second shot, once again, we're just gonna transport the ball down the fairway. There is no chance whatsoever uh, to get to green uh, on two, in two. And here we are looking to position ourselves for a direct headwind rough bump for the third shot. Yeah, so the third shot is where it all comes down to. But So we're just going to uh, add the spin, get our ball down the fairway and obviously make sure that you don't go too short here so you don't so you go in between clubs for the third shot no elevation is what i'm using here and i'm using max distance number with my cataclysm once getting it down there now we're going to change a little bit here on the screen we're gonna change to the b52 we are also going to change in that case the elevation for the second shot because we're not gonna play zero percent on that uh, sorry for the third shot we're gonna play ten percent on that one and we're going to upload the uh, shot number three for hole number nine there we do have it so you can see here i'm doing a pin check top of the yellow ring by the pin which is plus 16 and plus 16 uh, in my book there equals 85 percent slider 10 percent elevation power three ball settings 
I'm using topspin here, which is five bars of topspin. And one bar side spin to the left. Ball guy line to go through the hole. Approximately three green squares to make sure that we're not going to fall short. Because once again, this is the same as hole number one. The headwind is going to cr compress the ball guy line massively. Now, I do adjust. And I like the adjustment that I do besides one thing. That is that I do play with a 1201 pull angle, which is wrong here. We need to play with a flicker 1159 if we're going to have a chance to get this ball to drop. And you will notice here now that due to my pull angle, even if we do hit perfect and the ball hits the rough nicely, we're going to miss on the left hand side here. And if we would correct that and not go any 1201 aiming for 1159 flicker, then we would be having a much better chance doing an eagle. But to be completely honest, there will be once again very, very few eagles on this one. There will be mostly birdies and maybe some parts as well if you mess up the drive and go into the rough or into the sand. So please play it carefully. But this is at least an alternative that will bring you at least a decent chance of making an, al uh, making an eagle. If you don't have the possibility to play with five bars of topspin with the B52, pack the Goliath and play with the same thing because Goliath and the uh, B52 has the same power and therefore you can use the same slider. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for the qualifying round for the Baba's 9 hole cup here in Master Division. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Play Demic. Make sure that you do go and get your ultimate tournament guide package for the spring major tournament that comes up in just a couple of days by going to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. Link directly in the description down below. And as always, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up, you do subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Thank you once again for watching and good luck in your Gold Clash game.